Takis. 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 Have you ever had? What's a taki? Can Brad be here for my intro or no? I haven't even done my intro yet. We just started. Perfect. And we haven't had lunch. No, there's no lunches, Claire. 86 lunch. <laughs> more work. More videos. Claire, I'm in the BA Test Kitchen, and today I'm making gourmet Takis. I've never actually had Takis. I've heard a lot about them. It seems like a frequently requested gourmet make subject. Kind of seems like a cousin of the Dorito, in that it's a tortilla chip with a very intense seasoning on it. I know that they're rolled, so I'm really curious to get into them and kind of take a look at the construction. Open the bag. I'm really hungry, I haven't had lunch. They're probably delicious. We can go to Six Flags and save Whoa, $15. Did you say they're purple? Yeah, that's not purple. Oh, wow. These are good. The These concept's are good. good. I don't know if I like this flavor profile. These are good. You eat a bunch of those, though. You might get sick. You can't Ooh. eat too many of these. Ooh, you kind of want to go back, though, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. They're good. What other flavors we got besides Fuego? Wait, is uh, that, is that what we're having? No, the purple ones are Fuego. Well, let's try the spicy ones. Let's try hot. Is there, like, plain? Plain is Fuego? Oh, Fuego is fuego. plain? Fuego. Wait, so what did we just have? We had, um... Crunchy fajitas. Crunchy fajitas. You couldn't tell. Oh my goodness. Wow, these they are glow in the dark. Yeah. Oh, look at this one. This one's a little bit like unfolded. Whoa. Like these kill human beings. Why are they so red? I think you're gonna nail this one. Yeah. You know why? Because I already made uh, Doritos. Doritos. Take it. Roll same, it. Same chip. Roll it. Different spice mix. Make it less. Uh, I'll finish today. I'm excited for this one, Claire. Right. Your support means everything. Well, I'm here for you. <laughs> Anytime. You just call. He hasn't been here for like five episodes. Ooh, 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 these. The acid is all up front, and then you get kind of some of the chili, and then the heat comes later. These are incredible. They're really red, like unnaturally red. The red is the coating. There's no red in the middle. I'm not really liable to go and buy a bag of chips, but if I were, I would maybe be going for Takis. <gasps> I don't think I can try this. Why are they blue? Why are they blue? It makes me feel weird. Oh, so this is Taki's Wild TM. Spicy Buffalo Tortilla Chips. God, each one is like a more brilliant color than the last. Wow. These might be my favorite. These would be incredible with beer. If I had a bar, I would put these out because it would make people drink. I have to stop. I don't want to do this anymore. I, got, I, can't, I can't eat any more Takis. They're so good. They're spicy. Not like what crazy. The f is this? It's very simple. It's, it's a rolled tortilla. tortilla chip coated in some kind of very unnatural spice mix. Just the greatest. <coughs> Chris is so smelling it. <laughs> There's a that was sweet... a big bite for you, Chris. You really get a sweet, a, a, a very early sweet. It goes sweet, ah. sour, and then all sorts of other things, and then spicy. Are you okay? Not Something. What I was expecting. <laughs> no. It's, it's like a lot. Sweet and it's so sour. So sour. It's a little bit it's of like an assault. Citric acid, just like. And then it's just know? fire down below. Yeah. Yeah. And then it just drops down <laughs> lower and lower. Yeah. It's like overload. It's like when your dog mm. is like sniffing out the window of the car and you're like yeah. whipping through the neighborhood mm. and they're just like, oh my God, this thing, that thing. <laughs> Chris, in retrospect, this is truly your worst nightmare. This is my worst nightmare. <laughs> I'm sorry Why? I didn't think about that more. Just, because Chris, sour? Just so, his just palate so is so much. sensitive. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so it's this, I'm sure that they're different in general, but it seems like they're between six and a half and seven centimeters. In terms of, those, in terms of the thickness of the chip, I would say it's very, very thin. It just seems thick because there's so many layers. The chip is three millimeters thick. It's not a tight, it's not a very big spiral. It's not like there's many concentric rows. I like to try to hydrate these and soften them so I can roll it out and see what the sh original shape of the chip is before it's rolled. And I don't need it to completely stay in one piece. I just need it to come apart enough that I could get a general sense of the shape. Oh no. This didn't really 
helped me a lot. This is as whole and unrolled taki as I could manage. One thing though that I noticed is that if you break apart a taki, the inside of the roll has the powder coating on it. So that tells me that it's flat first, coated in the powder, then rolled, then possibly fried again or somehow crisped again so that it stays that it maintains that shape. Time for my favorite part, reading the ingredients. Corn masa flour, parentheses, processed with lime, close parentheses, vegetable oil, parentheses, palm and or soybean and or canola oil, and or rice bran oil, close parentheses, seasoning, brackets, salt, maltodextrin, citric acid, sugar, monosodium glutamate, hydrolyzed soy protein, onion powder, yeast extract, artificial color, parentheses, Red, wait, hold on, did I miss the close bracket? Nope. Red 40, flake, yellow stick, flake, close parenthesis, natural and artificial flavors, sodium bicarbonate, soybean oil, chili pepper, parenthesis, chili, disodium inosinate, disodium guanolate, TBHQ, parenthesis, antioxidant, close parenthesis, close bracket. Our old friend TBHQ, still forgot what that is. What is it again? <laughs> <laughs> we still don't know. Just as I thought it was. It's a corn chip with seasoning on it. But seasoning encompasses like 15 different things. And now we probably want to go over to the computer so I can do some more research. <laughs> Wait, I love what this says. Do you have what it takes to handle the intensity of Taki's rolled tortilla chips? Are you able to stand a crunchy bite of our full on flavor? And Chris's case, the answer is no. Yo. Oh, I've seen this. I go by the name of Dane Jones. Hot Cheetos and Takis. It's too loud. It's pretty much like this the whole time, right? Okay, cool. 17 million views. That's a lot of views. Good for those kids. Taki's factory, okay. All right, there's not anything on the internet about how Takis are actually made. Given the work I already did on the chip for Doritos, I think the primary challenge here will be forming them, getting them to stay, and making sure that they're crisp all the way through. And then the actual chip itself and the Coat, the flavor coating will be a little bit easier. Also, I said challenge like a real Midwesterner. I keep little notes about each recipe for gourmet makes, and this is Doritos. So here it has a quick summary of the dough, which is 100 grams of white masa harina, 60 grams of water, five grams oil, two grams salt, and two grams baking powder. So masa harina is a kind of corn flour made from kernels that are nixtamalized, and this is what corn tortillas are made out of. I'm gonna let this rest for maybe 10 or 15 minutes. And I'm trying to think if I need to make this the outside coating before I even start the frying test because that's part of the process. So let me see if I can pull together some ingredients for that. What if I do it, what if I nail it? It's 418. All right, so I took the bag with me onion powder, MSG, the sugar and citric acid over there, chili pepper we have over there. All right, I think we're good. I need a vermouth. Do you want me to get, you want me to get you a vermouth? I want a vermouth and some salami to add to my meal. Oh, I don't know about salami. Is there vermouth in there? I'm gonna make me a vermouth. I'll make you one. Do you like a little cube of ice? One. And a little, little wedge or something? I'm a little wedge. We have a huge problem. <laughs> Gabby, you're gonna look very chic with your oh vermouth. My God. Is it my birthday? Soon. Thank you. You're thank welcome. You. Enjoy. Oh God, thank you. Having a very thank civilized 4:30. I know. Kind I'm, of. I'm liking my new dress. I'm meeting yeah. Alexandra Bakes. That's the. Come on. This live, is life. Live your life. Best job ever. All right. Hashtag I love my job. Thank you. Salud. You're welcome. Salud. Oh my God, it's so good. Thanks, Claire. You're welcome. Wait, where, did the, where were the spices that I was holding? Oh, here they are. So, do you need a vermouth also? Oh my god. Gabby and Paul work so hard, they deserve a break. Oh my god. Salud. Cheers. Yeah, you should Thank you, Claire. You're welcome. Thank you. Oh, I forgot my spices. I forgot. Gonna make this seasoning mix the way I basically made all seasoning mixes in gourmet mix, which is to taste and just kind of adding small amounts of everything until I get kind of the right balance. And I'm gonna be making a particularly small amount because this is kind of just a preliminary test. And now I think two parts Korean red pepper. It's really bright red, so I, I like that it's bringing a lot of color. It needs a lot more salt. I think it could use a lot more chili. 
now, now we're getting somewhere. And some of the particles of the ingredients were a little big, so I'm gonna mill it. Watch out, it's gonna be vaporized. That's Kitchen Apocalypse. It's got kind of orange, but oh well, it's just a test. Over here, I'm gonna look for an appropriately sized cutter, something oval. Gabby really downsized the cutters, I'm a little worried. All right, we got diamonds. What do you call this Ooh, I'm trying to bend this cutter. This is the shape I've made. It's not great. It's not really even around, but I think it'll be good enough for this test. So this dough has been resting for at least, I think, 20 minutes or so. And I think I'm just going to start pressing pieces of dough. And now with the cutter, I worry a little bit about how crumbly it is. So I have my pot over here. And now I need to take it out of the oil before it starts to set, which might be like now. Quick coating, I feel like it's already drying out. Okay, well, it didn't work. <laughs> it got too dry. That's because I think the dough is too dry. And it's not thick enough. So I think what I need to do is fry it hotter and faster. I think I need a wetter dough so that it doesn't dry out so quickly. It would really be helpful if they showed inside the Taki factory, because I'm not sure how this is done. So I'm going to basically crumble it back into the bowl and add a little water and then knead it again. So I'm gonna do that same kind of test. Okay. I'm a little irritated at those sharp corners. Nah, it broke. I waited too long. The surface dried out too much in the fryer. So when I tried to roll it, it broke. I think maybe even hotter, because basically what I want to do is activate the baking powder through heat in the fryer really quickly while it's still pliable. Well, it cracked. Let's go home. <laughs> this, <laughs> this did not work. I learned a valuable lesson, which is that this is not how Takis are made, I'm pretty sure. I think one of the problems is that the masa harina doesn't have a lot of elasticity. It's like, if I were to pull, it doesn't stretch, it just tears, it just breaks. I'm gonna have to think about this one tonight because that was harder than I thought it was going to be. I went home and I did the thing I normally do, which is I intend to go think about it and then I forget and then I come back the next morning without a plan. But since I've been here this morning, I had an idea which is basically to back up and use a traditional method of making tortilla chips, which is to basically just make tortillas, griddle them, and then roll them up, because obviously cooked tortillas are pliable, and fry them. And I also want to make a more hydrated dough than I made yesterday. All right, that was like less than 30 seconds. So I'm not able to roll this without it breaking. I think I need more moisture and I have to roll it thinner. I want to get it a bit thinner than I had it before. You can see this one is already starting to bubble. <laughs> well, it's sticking. Well, that was annoying. Okay, I'm trying again. I'm just going to very lightly brush the surface with a little bit of oil. All right. I think what I want to try to use is um, a skewer to help me basically roll it. This one, by the way, is tearing. Um, but yeah, that didn't work. Hey, Brad. Hi, Brad. Hey, Brad. Are you good? Tortillas? All right. Yeah. Can I? I need a little help. I like your jacket. Oh, it's a shirt, but thank you. Well, okay. You can go out anyway. Just take, just take the compliment. Yeah, I need a little tortilla help. You need help. I need help too. With what? My knee, my knee's kind of, my knee's all, up. All I can do is years. give you the name of my orthopedist. Chris has gone there, Carla has gone to him. He's really? the best. Yeah. He's right over there. That's something, man. Okay, what so. What seems to be the situation? I'm, I can't get them to roll. Corn tortillas. So tightly. Yeah, corn. What is you, what's your base? You're using. A masa dough. Yeah. Masa water, a little okay. oil, salt. That's it. I say just hit the books. Do a little yeah. research. How do you yeah. make a corn tortilla a little stretchier? I wish I was more helpful, but. My That's brain's okay. just filled Thank with you. salt water. Is what are you doing for the... I made a quick version yesterday. You need some dehydrated kimchi powder? I got it. Yeah, you got some of that. Can I also maybe, um, can I use some of your miso powder? Yeah. Just put some salt on there and some mm. like... It smells good. Some like beet coloring. Mm. Ooh, beet coloring. That's a good idea. 
We maybe oh, have man. some powdered beet here. I don't think you want miso. It's kind of cheesy. No, that's maybe good. No, no, that's one. good. That's good. Hold on. That one's kind of like Parmigiani. This one's more like cheddar-y. Ooh, this smells so good. Give that one a little. No, I think this Give one. Give that one a pull. I'm going to find some uh, beet powder. All right, I have to wait for Gabby to get here. What do you think is the best fat for tortilla? I feel like I should use oil because at room temperature, I want it to be soft. I'd hit the books. <laughs> Let me, I'm gonna try one more time. The idea here is that by adding more fat, as I cook it, it will stay pliable, is basically the, the logic. And actually, I think more oil in the dough will also make it less likely to stick to the griddle, which means I probably don't have to oil the dough before I add it. Ugh, it's, not, it's not hot enough. And it's cracking. <laughs> I think I think Brad's right. I think I have to go just do some research. Hi. Hey, how are you? Are you on LIRR? I thought you were in Mexico. No, I was. I am I'm coming back from my last weekend in Fire Island and then I'm shooting next week, so Oh my god. I'm well, back to Mexico on Tuesday. Oh wow. What a life. So I'm having I'm trying to make um I'm on this is gourmet mix. I'm trying to make Takis. Oh, okay. What do you, and I was like, I tried adding more oil, more hydration, cook, cooking them really fast. You can write, you can roll them in a very tight roll, um, and then put a toothpick in, drop it in, and, and fry it. The raw dough. Yeah. Interesting. After I roll it. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, I haven't even been able to really, I mean, this is different dough than I was trying before, but I can try rolling the raw dough and see what happens. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Rick eats Scorpion. it all. Scorpion. <laughs> all right, bye. <laughs> this is final Fire Island weekend. Rick, I'm sorry about summer. Let me see what kind of a roll I can get with the raw dough. I mean, that works. All right, that is a tight spiral. I just want to point out. This isn't, this isn't much too big for a taki. I, it rolled over onto itself too many times, but... That's pretty good. That was maybe a, a mini breakthrough, what just happened. I want to see if I can just drop it right into the fryer and get a good result. But first, I want to actually coat the dough after I press it in the powder on both sides and then try to roll it and see what happens because I, there's no other explanation for how these are made than that approach. Oh no, it's breaking apart. Oh my God. So I took it out of the oil before it was crisp because it exploded which tells me that I have to dry it first, which means I think I'm gonna bake them and then fry them. So that's really great. That's super useful. And I'm gonna basically sit here and form maybe five Takis as a test. So I'm just gonna do some quick assembly. I feel very good about these. I think that on a basic level, there's, there's a path forward with this method. All right, now I'm gonna do something kind of stupid and just dump them all in the fryer. All right, let's see what happens. Yeah, this guy's getting kind of dark, I'm gonna pull it. So the spices got really dark um, in the fryer, so maybe I fried them a little too hot. It's not as thick or as open as a regular taki, so I'm still thinking that maybe baking powder is a good move. All right, that's crisp, surprisingly crisp. Overall, it's pretty good. It's crispy, it tastes like a tortilla chip. There's a couple issues, like spices make it a little bit bitter because they got kind of dark in the fryer. It's a little too hard, it could be a little more open and airy, but overall, I'm surprised actually at, at how close I got just in this step. I'm going to make a new dough. All right, so now I think I'll add one gram of baking powder. Okay, so now I'm gonna make a new seasoning mix using a lot of the same ingredients as yesterday, but also adding fresh ground, cashmere chilies. I like the idea of using Brad's kimchi powder because it has a sourness to it. I really like the umami, almost cheesy flavor from this powdered miso he made. Three quarters of a teaspoon MSG, kosher salt, citric acid, and onion powder. And then I do three quarters of a teaspoon of sugar. We're gonna double the cayenne. The beet powder is not gonna bring a lot of flavor, mostly color. I have to mill this because all the particles are different sizes. Ooh, that's a lot of citric acid. <laughs> Needs more chili. Ooh, better, it's good. Now I'm gonna start portioning out my dough. I'm gonna make them bigger and thicker. All right, I'm 
just trying to roll it now. It's a little bit thicker, and I'm expecting that it will be kind of fewer revolutions around the dowel. So I'll bake this for about five minutes, and then try it. My Taki's exploding. Sorry. The oil is still a bit hot, so there was a stronger puffing. I'm using 50% more dough, which means I probably need to let them bake 50% longer, and I didn't do that. I put baking powder in, which means there is, in addition to the water coming off as steam, there's that chemical reaction that's producing gas. So it's not surprising that it wanted to uncoil a bit. I think the thickness, actually, of the, of the dough looks good. good. The spice, the spice mix is kind of delicious. Ooh. Thoughts? Mm. Not much heat on it. Surprising. I put like a lot of heat in it. Here. Yeah, it's a little more overgrown now. Yeah. Okay, so maybe Wait, it needs so a little you, fresh you, dusting. You're frying and then taking them out and kind of like giving a little toss? No, or I'm, I'm coating them pre-fry. I feel like you might go the one pre and then post. the two. Pre yeah. post. I think that's smart. Because yeah. then you get like cooked flavors plus fresh, yes. right. You're not getting the talky fingers without uh, without doing a little No, coat. look at my apron. <laughs> From doing a lot of Just this. Just like doing that, yeah. yeah. Chris, what's an oval shape that I can use as a cutter? Don't we have some like ovaloid cutters? Not that I could find. Sure. Yeah, we probably got rid of them. My idea is basically to use these two shapes together to kind of cut four sides of the oval. And now I'm using, with much smaller curve, basically round off the ends. This is so tedious. I'm gonna try to shave off a little bit of this edge. All right, I feel really good about this one. Let's bring it over here. It got really dry and it didn't break apart. It looks really good. I think it's so cute. It does kind of remind me of an extremely small skinny cannoli. That amount of overlap inside the spiral, I think that looks good. All right, it's a little wet on the inside, but I'm, I'm so far I'm pretty pleased. I know I was so confident before that the Takis are coated before they're fried, but now I'm not so sure. Based on the way that these spices kind of toast and take on color in the oil, I think there's, it's, there's very li little chance that this coating itself is fried, I think. Maybe it's better just to roll and fry and dehydrate and then, or maybe coat and then dehydrate. This is where a YouTube video would be really helpful. So I wanna try a version where I just leave it plain and then try to add the coating after it comes out of the fryer. I'm gonna try dusting it now with some of the seasoning. I'm basically just gonna to toss it together in a bag. That coating got real thick. Too thick. Wow, the interior looks really good. It looks puffed and it's crispy. <coughs> it's a lot spicier. It's so much more sort of sweet, sour, spicy. And those flavors are a lot more forward. I feel like this is more correct than adding it pre-fry. I tested enough parts of the process that I'm not anticipating some major snag. So I think one more day and, and I got it. What could go wrong? I truly forgot what gourmet make subject we were on and what day it was and what we've done so far. So I had to be reminded that we were on Taki. I really did forget what I did. What did I do? Did I like the seasoning? Was it good? I thought it was good? Like I was happy with it? I mean, Taki mix, that sounds positive. I feel like my brain is rejecting all non-essential information and the essential things are like, where do I live? <laughs> how, do I, how do I take the subway? <laughs> like, that's about it. I don't know. It's sleep deprivation. It's sleep deprivation induced amnesia. I was told I'm really close, so I'm just gonna do everything that's written here from day two. I'm making the dough. So I'm following everything I did on day two because I don't even know what I would change. The dough is resting, and now I wanna take a look at the cutters that our wonderful PA ordered for this shoot because he knows me better than I know myself. Yes. John's the best. I think this is gonna be perfect. I'm gonna start portioning, flattening, and cutting.
That looks so good. I'm just gonna make a bunch. Hi. How you doing? I had forgotten that I didn't finish this. And then I thought we were starting a new one today and I came in and they were like, it's day three of Taki. It was literally like a nightmare. Do you need help? Do you want to set up an assembly line? Yes, I do. I really do. How's that for a log? That is so perfect. Whenever we set up an assembly line, it makes me really happy. Me too. Rhoda's weighing out and rolling into a log and I'm cutting and rolling onto the dowel. All right, I forgot about these little guys. Is that enough? Uh, so did I. Yeah, you didn't. I literally forgot what I was doing. Do you have a job for Brad? No. Can you jump in? Negative. Do you want to help? help? My do you want? Do you want to help, Brad? Come on, Brad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could do a little something quick. <laughs> okay. Can I use your dehydrator? You got stuff in there? That one there. Are you ever gonna let me use that one? It's but it's just like it's already set up. It's right over there in the corner. It's so yeah, close it's to us. Yeah, it's perfect. You can use it. <laughs> I just have to take the egg yolks out. Okay, great. You want to show me? Yeah, I'll show guy? you the ropes. Hold on. Thing. Let me let me pop these in the oven, yeah. and then you can show me. Yeah, so these are gonna go in. Right here. Yeah, three hundred for I don't remember how long. Real simple. Look, Celsius Fahrenheit. I'm assuming you're gonna stick the Fahrenheit. Yeah. And then it's set. When uh -huh. each one's blinking, timer is in hours. Okay. And it's got two little dual fans in there. We really upgraded. Yeah, this one's so fancy. It's so nice. Okay. Face them all towards the fan. So oh, that it blows yeah, yeah. air yes. through them. Okay, good. All right, Claire, Godspeed. Stay positive. Okay. Have fun. Smile with your mouth, with your eyes, with your hands. Okay? Uh-huh. All the smiles. Okay. I'll do that. All right, let's see what we got here. I'm going to fry everything at once. <laughs> this is really scary. I think they look pretty good. They are, like, I don't love the cracks in them. It's just mostly an aesthetic issue. I don't think it's a big enough issue that I have to do anything over again, which is the only kind of issue I care about. Yeah, this is a technique from the Great British Baking Show to make things cool faster. I'm going to use a big resealable plastic bag to coat them. Ooh, do we have that lens puffer thing? So this is a little air puffer that's used to clean camera lenses. I've kind of commissioned it for gourmet makes uses. <laughs> Wait, this is working though. Hold on, look at this. It is working. <laughs> it is working. Dude, these are really coated. Okay, these look pretty good. There's places where it's kind of caked on, but I feel like that's how ta the Takis are. The main thing I was trying to accomplish with that technique was to try to get some of the seasoning in the interior of the roll, which based on the looks of it ha is what happened. So that's, that's kind of like mission accomplished. You can see in terms of a color, it's red and it's not that bad, um, but can't hurt to let them um, really dehydrate. And then I'm ensured that super crispy bite all the way through, but I'm gonna actually just put them onto the rack directly because I want that full air circulation. And I think Brad's idea of having them be in line with the fan in the back, it was really smart so that there's air puffing kind of through that center cylinder. So I think the safest thing is to leave these here for about an hour and then I'll come back and check on them. They look really good, I think. I'm obviously pretty confident because I've already put the final ones on the plate and compare them to the original even though I haven't tasted them yet. So let me just taste one to make sure this is the version I want to feed people. Oh yeah. Ooh. Is this a time for me or no? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, I think I'm good. I think I'm ready for you. Oh, I did put the cashmere chili in there. <laughs> right? It's but good. It, it does that like puckery thing. Too yeah. Well. It burns our. <laughs> it's, it's a lot. It's just like almost too much. And then you're like, okay, one and then, more. <laughs> <laughs> like the only way to quell it is to have another one. I appreciated Molly's validation because I do really like the way that these, not only do they, that they taste, but that really satisfying crunch. And it did get airier than I thought in the dehydrator. Like it really lightened up. So it actually turned out better than I thought it would, which that's that's a rare gourmet makes. They told us we couldn't have a meal, so I'm gonna go ask again. I think, can we just bring it into him? I'll just really discreetly peek in to see what they're doing. <laughs> a meal, a meal. <laughs> Real quick, dude, I brought you a present. 
you. I really needed this. Really? <laughs> Do you want an original two as a side by side? Um, yeah, I'm gonna have that after. Okay, yeah, I think you should have it after. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we were so crazy. I mean, it's a lot. This is definitely we've got the crunch. Uh huh. And the like insane. <laughs> Like flavor that kind of like totally yeah. overloads your taste yeah. buds like and makes you, you forget about anything else that you were thinking about. Uh huh. It's there. It's kind of. Ah! Know, <laughs> Are you okay? It's just so shocking. Yeah. Ooh, Rhoda, you want to try one? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> that's wow, that's everyone some... makes. <laughs> that's <was> flavorful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it packs a wallop. I think you nailed it. Thanks. This has been a day of extreme highs and lows, even more than usual. <laughs> but we're ending on a high, so I'm pretty happy about that. It all came together at the end pretty quickly and in like a very satisfying way, so I'm pretty pleased. I did overcome the curse, which is not even a thing. It doesn't matter. But if there were to be a curse, this... Just don't... Just... There is no curse. <laughs> Here's how you make gourmet takis. To make the seasoning, combine one teaspoon tahini, three quarter teaspoon Kashmiri chili, quarter teaspoon bread's kimchi powder, quarter teaspoon bread's miso powder, three quarter teaspoons MSG, two teaspoons kosher salt, a half teaspoon citric acid, quarter teaspoon onion powder, three quarter teaspoon sugar, quarter teaspoon cayenne pepper, and half teaspoon beet powder in a container and shake. To make the taki dough, combine 50 grams of white masa harina, two grams kosher salt, and one gram baking powder. Add 65 grams lukewarm water and eight grams vegetable oil and mix with a spatula until you have a stiff dough. Knead the dough until smooth then wrap in plastic and let rest 15 to 20 minutes. Portion out four and a half gram pieces of dough and roll in a ball. Flatten slightly, then place between sheets of plastic and flatten further with a sizzle platter. Use an elliptical cutter to punch out an ellipsis, then roll the ellipsis tightly around a wooden skewer. Rest each skewer seam side down and repeat with several more pieces of dough. Place each skewer on a small rim baking sheet and bake at 300 degrees Fahrenheit until dry to the touch, about 10 minutes. Fry in 300 degree Fahrenheit vegetable oil until the chips are very crisp and golden, then transfer to a rack and let cool. Place the chips in a plastic bag, toss in a generous amount of seasoning, Fill the bag with air, seal, and shake vigorously until all the takis are coated. Remove from the bag and shake off excess. And dry in a dehydrator on high for several hours until completely crisp. Is there gonna be a Gourmet Makes, like, director's cut of anything? Or like, Gourmet That's Makes? Or the cut. They're like 40 minutes long. <laughs> 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 we need an editor's or, cut. Or, yeah, or what about, um, like, outtakes? Someone once said in the comment section, and it was like the top rated, that the entire episode is is out as outtakes. outtakes. That's a in, good point. It was in regards to Andy sneezing in the background. <laughs> Poor Andy. <laughs>